I think a lot of you know players maybe look to you um, in terms of what you're doing stylistically and, and guitar wise and and that type of thing. So that being said, I mean, can can you help me understand? Um, I mean, what is the role of the guitar player in, in, in the modern world in a band in 2006? I mean, how is it different than a, than a, than a guy playing in a band in 1975? I mean, I think the, the guitar has taken on, a, 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 you know, uh, different boundaries and different sounds. And um, uh, I mean, does any of this make sense to you? Yeah, no, completely. I think there's a complete difference, but, you know... But you know, the seventies, eighties, that on guitar playing to, to today. I mean, obviously, depending on the music and the band that are playing it as well. You know, some, some people take their their, their musical influence di- direct from from bands. You know, from the seventies, or you know, um, and st- still use that style of playing. But with ourselves, it, it, it's very different. You know, um, it's just another tool to create a song and create layers to create soundscapes if you will to create melody lines as opposed to uh, a lead instrument really right exactly and that's kind of how i've always kind of played you know yes there's lead lines or things but only used when they're needed to, to, to um to lift a certain bar or a bridge or to lift a, a second half of a chorus you know mm-hmm. um the rest of the time, it's, it's 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 you know, especially with this record, there's a lot of atmospherics on this record that were were done using guitar. Um, live, there may be there there may be samples or triggered, but um, on the main lines we played. But um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I you know, I, I, this time around, I tried to do as much as I possibly could and and um, not be afraid of trying things this time. You know, I mean, confidence is a key word. For myself in this record, um, I think I was a lot more timid and shy on Final Straw than didn't and wasn't prepared to push myself. Um, whereas this time, uh, and, and you know that's working with Garrett and um, Jack Knightley, um t- t- to to push myself a lot harder and and to try and and, and get a distinctive Snow Patrol sound if that's what we've achieved, you know. Um, so yeah, I mean it's a very it's a very odd thing, you know, um, just kind of to, to, to kind of have to go into yourself and, and, and not relearn, but just kind of, you know, beat yourself a bit and, and, and put pressure on yourself to do that. Exactly. So, I mean, Nathan, what, what is it exactly that, that you feel that, that maybe does set your playing apart from, you know, maybe the other bands sort of, you know, playing a similar type of music? I mean, what kinds of things did you try to... Um, you know, achieve on the new record that maybe you hadn't heard before, you know, other guitar players doing and, you know, kind of new sounds. I mean, could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> I, mean, I, I don't think it was anything with my guitar playing. I don't think it was anything incredibly um, inventive that hasn't been done before. That's not where I'm sort of coming from, you mm-hmm. know. Um, I'll, I'll leave that to people who are your innovators. Um, who, who, um, who would you say that would be left to then? I mean, in your mind, who would those innovators be? I don't mean to interrupt uh, you, but Edge for a start, hmm. um, obviously. Um, I, I think uh, uh, Johnny Greenwood is an incredible guitar player. You know, um, Radiohead. Uh-huh. Um, uh huh. Johnny Marr, you know, <laughs> is, is is one of the great guitarists of all time. Mm-hmm. You know, and I suppose that there are people who he would be my guitar heroes, really, compared, to, you know, to maybe, I don't know, who else people might like, you know, but, I mean, even growing up, it was never, you know, incredible guitarists as they are, you know, uh, Jimi Hendrix and Jimmy Page are, you know, probably the two sort of most, you know, obvious people that they kind of mentioned, you know, Jimmy Page is very much an innovator, but in a different way, you know, um, so I suppose I kind of tried to take from what those guys try to do and you know and just kind of build on that or, or basically you know as I say use use my guitar to, to, to never to overpower songs just to kind of um, sit on them or with them you know um, especially the type of music we make obviously it's, it's very lyrically driven as well so mm-hmm. you, can't, you, you can't you can't you know 
over force um, solos or anything like that. You know, cause I understand. It doesn't suit, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think a lot of the t this time was, you know, I, I really wanted to to, 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 to be a, a respected as a guitar player maybe this time, you know, and you know, um, you know, working closely with Garrett a lot on this record, you know, we we. We we done so much guitars and scrap things and redone things and tried things and um, you know using delays and 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 you know ebos or whatever you have you know to, to create to create atmospheres you know and um, yeah I mean I think it, I think it worked <laughs> absolutely so I mean um, if I if I just toss out some song titles here could you kind of uh, yeah. tell me what's going on kind of guitar wise and effects wise and playing wise I mean you know you're all I have. Um, uh, I mean, I guess our, I guess our kind of our first taste of the new record, and and you know the first track, and um, so what were you trying to say, sort of guitar-wise and, and musically with that one? Uh, I mean, you're all I have is probably the, the simplest, really. I mean, there's hmm. there's not a lot going on there apart from, from pretty much layers and layers of big guitars. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it's all it's all very it's pretty simple, you know, simple block. You know. You know, we, there there may be like five or six layers there of of, of different sides of distortion, beef up guitars. You know, um, I mean, the only thing that's kind of complicated in there is maybe the, the little chime guitar at the start, mm -hmm. which which is actually four different four different lines um, played at the same time, all in completely different delays. Um, and we we done that quite a lot throughout the record as well. You know. Uh, on a song like "Make This Go On Forever," that was done as well. It, it it's not in the foreground as much as it is, and you're all I have, but it's there in the chorus. You know, you know, four or five different simple, like you know, what two notes, you know, A to right. or whatever, as an example. You know, just sliding up to it in time. You know, and um, but with the delays that you put on each thing, create this kind of this um, this little kind of uh, bed of. Um, of loveliness, if you will. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, um, I mean, Nathan, can can you kind of tell me like the the types of guitars and and sort of the effects and things that you were using like on on, on that particular song? Yeah, um, I mean, generally uh, for for every song, pretty much what I use. I mean, I I um, that song was was pretty much a Les Paul. Les Paul. Um, I, I my my setup is. I mean, <coughs> I, I used it. I used it on. Final straw as well, pretty much. I mean, we had so many different amps. We had Foxes, Orange, Marshall, Fender, um, but generally, I, I kind of stick. Tend to, it's just the way it happened. Was I, I use a Marshall Jubilee, mm -hmm. and I use that for pretty much nearly everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, obviously, there's very obvious sounds like a Vox, you know. Um, you know, I tell you through a Vox, which all you know is a sound you can only get that way, you know. But generally. Right. We used we used the bigger sounds, you know. Um, I, I use it. I use mainly tellies and Les Pauls. Um, can you can you be a little more specific in terms of years and, and models? Oh yeah, of course. Um, I use um, I, I, I've got two tellies which I use a lot. Um, like I've got a nineteen seventy four Sunburst Custom. Um, I've got a nineteen seventy seven uh, Blonde Custom. They're both very similar. Um, I, I just I, the, the 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 sunburst I I just adore mm -hmm. uh, for a few years now. I actually bought it in the states. Oh really? Um, about three or four three years ago, um, and I I just I, I adore it. Um, my Les Paul is a tobacco um, tobacco nineteen seventy nine uh, Les Paul custom, um, which is just one of the most beautiful guitars I've ever got my hands on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I certainly won't be letting it go anytime soon. <laughs> Um, and then I use a, a um, reissue, uh, which I use. In, I used in quite a lot of songs actually for kind of extra parts, like you know, um, overlapping parts, simple you know lines, um, you know, lower register stuff. I, I use a Gretsch, um, a Black Jew Jet, mm. which is you know a song like "Shut Your Eyes" with the sort of twang, you know, the brown bring that kind of thing. You know, yeah, right. I used it in that and. Um, you're all I have actually underneath there's like a bong bong which is you know I used to scratch a lot for mm -hmm. um, and I got I got a 1965 um, Jaguar um, Sunburst Jaguar which I use as well I mean they were the main kind of guitars I used I mean there was maybe one or two other things we tried or 
used for one bit and one song, you know, but that, that was pretty much the, the, the guts of what I used. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, have, have you always kind of pretty much been a, like a telly player? I mean, Gary also plays a telly, right? Yeah, he does. He plays a, he plays, um, <coughs> a the deluxe, a custom deluxe, which has got, you know, obviously, as you know, the, the three humbuckers and other things. You know. Right, so, so there's never like a problem of sort of, you know, um, um, Defining the the, the the sounds of the two guitars, the fact that you're both playing the same types of guitars. Yeah, I mean we, we, we use very different amps as well and different different effects and things. So that you know, um, of, of course the guitars um, affect that and are and are enhance that as well. But um, just what we're, we're we, you know we're doing completely two different things. You know, um, especially this time around. Um, you know, I've got a lot more dynamics and a lot more. Um, Quiet, loud, or different tones than than Gary would be using. You know, it's as simple as his setups, a little simpler. You know, I mean, he's he's obviously a singer as well. You know, yeah, right. So he's got that to concentrate on as well. You know, right. Um, but yeah, I mean, a guy, I think Gary just uses um, just was he just uses uh, an uh, an eight hundred, you know. I see. An eight hundred, yeah. yeah. And, um, and and I think it's an old nineteen sixties race. He be uses this as well. Uh huh. Um, but yeah, you know. But I mean, it's you know, it, it's it's um, something that I, I've definitely got a lot more involved in over the past sort of year or since the start of last year, more than I would have before. And um, again, I said it's confidence, you know, and really, you know, getting involved with delays and different reverbs and different sounds, you know. Did so so that <coughs> excuse me so that so that did take a, a a little bit of a learning curve. I mean, to understand how to really use delays and play in time and, and kind of make things work and then not, you know, get in the way of a vocal and... Yeah, I mean, it, it, it took me time anyway, you know. Um, <laughs> um, hmm. I've been playing guitar 10 years. Um, I'd say properly about six of those years, you know. Um, and, you know, it's, it was something that until I sort of, until Final Straw, it was never really... Um, interested in as a guitarist before that you know I was just pretty much straight you know the old fashioned way ACDC and the amp and that was it you know <laughs> um, but I mean as, as, as I joined Snow Patrol and I joined my, my, my kind of role changed as a guitar player you know um, and, and I had to evolve and learn these things and and some of it, some of it was wasn't natural either you know but I mean that's the whole point of playing, playing and and, and trying to better yourself and becoming mm -hmm. a better musician, mm -hmm. you know. And, and and you know, Garrett really did help me as well. You know, he he wouldn't let me leave the room without fulfilling my potential. You know, I mean, he'd never tell me what to play. Sometimes that might actually been easier. But um, <laughs> you know, he he would he would he would say, no, that's not this or that is right. Or, but when something was right, you knew then he mm -hmm. he was happy with it. Or and um, you know, we talked about it. You know, and and. Um, and, and came up with ideas for things and, and you know, about what about this, what about that. But it was a very organic process as well. It, w it maybe wasn't just as preconceived as that, you know. Right. So, um, I mean, you mentioned Edge earlier. I mean, is he someone that you would listen to in terms of the way that he used effects and delays and loops and, um, you know, made his guitar sound so big in a three-piece like that? Y yeah, I mean, of course. I mean, you know, I mean anyone who's technically minded like that at all and, and I don't mean playing wise you know um, just just how he creates that thing you know it's, it's, it's fascinating you know um, I was very aware as well not to you know um, that's kind of his domain as well you know it's kind of it would be, it'd be very easy to, to get a decent delay sound on the record and but it will sound just like you too you know I was very aware yeah. not not to try and imitate it either you know mm -hmm. um, because you know it's, it's obviously it's it's very distinctive and very his, you know, very much his own. So that I mean that was kind of tricky too, you know. But I mean it's and, and again that was why it was kind of creating these sort of um, layers, for want of a better word, um, mm -hmm. and not to kind of push it out too much. I mean, there's of course there's moments. I mean, I don't think there's been a guitar player in the past fifteen years in, in the type of um, in many bands that hasn't been influenced by the edge, you know. Right, right. Like when you hear, like, you know, even people like Johnny Goodman or, you know, you listen to a band like the editors with the, some of the delays things or, or just reverb patterns that they have, you know, or, or maybe not, 
you know, the, the band may sound a little more Joy Division, but you can, you can definitely hear even in bands like that, who, you know, who are one of my favorite bands actually, um, you can still hear that influence there, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, um, and I, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Nathan, um, you guys toured with you too. I mean, did you have a chance to, to speak with Edge at all or hang or kind of watch him play up close or kind of trade guitar? Well, I got, I got to see sort of, you know, I, I was very yeah, keen to see how his, his, his setup was. I, I got to talk to Dallas. Um, Dallas Shee, obviously he's probably just as famous as The Edge, mm-hmm. um, briefly, you know, and on, on, on a couple of occasions, just kind of see what his setup is and how he is, and it's very, you know, it's very um, impressive, you know, but um, yeah. I, I, actually the one person I never got to meet was The Edge, actually, uh-huh. which, um, who was, you know, I'd, I'd love to, you know, but um, I mean, the other thing is, you know, I, I probably wouldn't want to board bore the tits off him as well because you know <laughs> at the end of the day it's just his job and that's what he does the same mm-hmm. way I do you know mm-hmm. so um, if it came up through conversation sure but I mean I probably wouldn't want to pickle, pickle his head with anything <laughs> I understand um, uh, on a song like uh, Shut Your Eyes I mean the, the, the keyboards are a little um, more present there and there's kind of like some organ sounds going yeah. on I mean, how does the band, I mean, how do you work with a second guitar player and a keyboard player? I mean, how do you, you know, you talk about these layers, so I mean, how does it work where you, you know, you, you put your parts on and, and, and you know, you, you don't step on what the keyboard player's playing or the sounds or his pads, I mean, how does that, sort of that production process work? I, th- I think it's, um, it, it, dep- it very much depends on the song, you know, and I, th- I think from the start, once you start laying down a song or the idea, I think it's very easy to see. Sometimes, let, let, let me stress that. Sometimes, um, <laughs> it's easy to see where it's kind of going on a song like "Shut Your Eyes." Um, I didn't really know where the song was going. Um, you know, as I say, something that you all I have is very simple. You, you know, it, it, it's sort of painting by numbers, really, uh-huh. um, <laughs> for that kind of song. You know, and, uh, and I don't, I'm not trying to belittle it by any means, but oh, I understand. Um, you know, it's. It's, it's, it's formulaic, I mean, it's easier to do that. Something like Shut Your Eyes, because we had no maybe idea of, I mean, you know, it's a kind of rhythm that Snowball don't really use before. And um, again, one of my favorites on it, I was kind of, and because it was very keyboard driven and that kind of kind of vibe to it, you know, um, I think for me it was just, you know, when, when I was trying to put stuff down onto it or put guitar parts, I was very aware not to overcomplicate it or overcrowd it because it's quite a simple song in a mm-hmm. sense. M- there might be a few things going on, but you know, it's it's pretty straightforward. And I think what what I suppose I, I, I do a lot is, you know, not apart from big rock songs, is to to kind of simplicity to me is the key. Sometimes you know, the, the more simple, the more effective. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and not to, not to overcomplicate a play when it needs to be played. You know, and that, that's something that you know. I discovered while working with Garrett, you know, and um, it's, it's very important. Right. Um, uh, a song like "Make This Go On Forever." Again, there's this piano kind of in the intro there, and and the guitars sort of build there. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, is this just a? Uh, I mean, do you try to take a, a, a different? Um, I mean, did you, I mean, do you look at each song sort of separately and say, what does a song need and you know, well, I've I've used these delays, or I've kind of used that sound before. I mean, so w- were you consciously? I mean, trying to, you know, paint paint little different soundscapes on on each song. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, again, I don't know how preconceived it was. I mean, it's a very, to be honest, it's a very strange process because <clears throat> we we spent two weeks sort of completing writing. Mm-hmm. Um, before we go into the studio, and I'm not great in that situation, and I I, I don't like it. Um, I prefer writing once. I prefer putting my parts as we're about to record. I like experimenting while we're playing, and then when I say experimenting, I've got a rough idea of what I, what should be happening. But I don't, you know, I don't like to come in with six parts that this is what I've got, you know. Mm. Sometimes that helps, yes, you know, and, and you, if you've got a great idea for something and you try it, it works. Sometimes it doesn't, but, you know, there was plenty of days where, as I said, it was just myself and Garrett and obviously the engineer sitting in the studio and we'd spend maybe, you know, a, a couple of hours on a chorus just trying a few different things and 
and, and building up things. And, you know, as I say, some things don't work. So it it is a very organic process, and it, it's kind of hard to kind of um, describe in a way. You know, um, I, I just know the relation. I, I, I love working with Garrett as well. You know, because um, he instills quite a bit of confidence. You know, um, but it's it's very just weird. You know, I just kind of go in and. And I was expecting it to be a lot harder this time. <laughs> and I mean, with final straw, I did come in with pre, you know, uh, uh, rest of it pre-written, or you know, and and then had to change some because it didn't really work. And so this time I was just kind of, as I say, just willing to let myself go a bit more and and see what happened. Really, I see.